This is a long overdue by three years video of a little AC power wagon that I built. It was a project that was based on these BYD batteries, which at the time were popular three years ago. Um, these were surplus used batteries. And they're connected to an inverter and a transformer and these are just outlets um, on the two legs and then a 220. Um, anyway I built it up into a little cart and I thought I'd show you some of the details. The batteries were originally advertised as being five kilowatt hours each but they turned out to be more like three, 3.3 .3 maybe. Uh, as you can barely see I measured the capacity of each of the eight cells per battery, four batteries, eight cells each. Um, and you can see they range anywhere from 114 amp hours up to 146 amp hours. So quite a variation uh, in these used batteries. What I ended up doing was wiring them all together, all the cells together in parallel here. And so things averaged out and the, the total capacity ends up being about 13 kilowatt hours. And uh, so anyway, there's the, the on switch, simple enough. And then the inverter has its own switch. The inverter I chose was an EA Sun, which is basically an MPP clone. Cheap, it's a 240 volt version intended for Europe but it was fine for me, it was cheap, and it had high voltage solar inputs, which was important for me at the time, I thought, <laughs> uh, to connect to my solar array. Well, that didn't work out, as we'll see, but uh, the output of the 220 inverter goes to a transformer, an eBay special 3, 3 kVA um, transformer, which I can wire either as well as two legs of 110 making 220 or just wired together in parallel for one a uh, higher capacity 110. it's a three kilowatt system and i didn't know at the time whether it could power my house or how how best it would power my house so i played with it and ultimately decided that uh, running the two phases together just to make a high capacity 110 uh, was sufficient. And then when I power the house in the case of a power failure, um, I wire the two legs together and it runs the house fine. That was one of the experiments to perform was, will, can you do that? And the answer is yes, of course you can't run 220 appliances, but it's great for keeping the fridge, the freezer, uh, and even running the microwave. So it's a nice little portable system. The, when I first built it, I, moved, I had the batteries forward over the wheels that you steer with the cart, and that did not work out at all. It was far too hard to maneuver. Um, so I moved the batteries to the back instead, and it's fairly easy to move around. My intention was to wheel it to the side of the house where the solar array came down. But what I learned is, and I didn't know this at the time, the solar array on the roof has a rapid shutdown feature so that if you lose the grid, it shuts down the solar panels. And rather than hack and reverse engineer that, I just abandoned the idea and I now just keep this cart here in the corner of the garage and when needed I plug into an available 220 outlet and that back feeds the panel and runs the whole house. Now of course you should never do that because a device like this that hooks into the 220 and then terminates in a, in a 110 that you would plug in here is highly hazardous if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but uh, for me, it was an experiment. And anyway, uh, it 
was very interesting. I spent a lot of time thinking about battery management systems, BMS, and eventually realized after much hacking and measuring that in my case, it's just not necessary. These batteries are so huge and so poorly matched that you really only have to keep track of the least potent battery. And when it's full, that's it. And when it's empty, that's it. So, you, you know, it's the weak link and you just monitor that. And for me, it just sits in the garage waiting for a power failure and then flip the breaker, plug it in, and it runs the house. Now, if I was going to do something more frequent, um, then I would, of course, want a good BMS system. As it is, it's a cart, just useful for block parties or running the house. As it turns out now, it's been three years, it's worked flawlessly. The biggest problem is the tires are kind of cheap on this cart. It's a gorilla cart, and I need to add air every six months or so. Another thing that I've that learned or has evolved is that three kilowatts is about what you need to run my house anyway. Uh, we had a new solution show up in the form of my wife's new electric car, which has vehicle to grid, but turns out that car's inverter is only about 1800 watts, and that is not enough to run the house, the fridge, the freezer, and a microwave. So while the car has massive 77 kilowatt hours, uh, it really doesn't do much good. Another thing that has happened since then is uh, we purchased a camper van. And that van itself has an inverter and a lithium system that's essentially comparable to the cart, about 13 kilowatt hours and 3,600 watts. So this is just a fun toy. It was very educational and playing with and I finally wanted to share it for those people who I promised I would. Thanks a lot.